Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on the percent proportion. Our objective today is that you, the student, will use the percent proportion to find parts, wholes, and percents. Here's what I want you thinking about today as we go through the lesson. In the percent proportion, what do the ratios represent? So my goal is for you to connect what you know about ratios that form a proportion, so reminding you that a proportion is two equivalent ratios, and thinking about how two ratios can represent percents and parts and wholes. So we're going to put together all prior knowledge that you already have. So let's first talk about percent, part, and whole. A percent tells you a ratio out of 100. So 60% is equivalent to 60 parts out of 100. So 100 being the whole. So when we look at a percent, our whole is 100. So a percent is a ratio, 60 being the part out of the whole of 100. Simplified, that's 3 out of 5. Both of these are divisible by 20. 60 divided by 20 is 3. 100 divided by 20 is 5. So in simplest form, it's 3 to 5. And we can consider this a ratio of a part to a whole. So if we look at this circle, it is divided into five sections. So five being the whole. The entire circle is represented by five sections. The part is three of them are shaded. So three-fifths of this circle is shaded. And three-fifths is equivalent to 60%. So we can say that 60% of the circle is shaded. And we have an equivalent ratio here. 60 out of 100 equals 3 out of 5. So there's our percent proportion. Our percent, our part, our whole. So here is our percent proportion that we're going to use. We're going to put our percent over 100. You drop the percent symbol and represent it as a fraction or a ratio, 60 out of 100. And then in simplest form, it will be equivalent to your part over your whole. And we're going to show you how you have your be asked questions. And you're going to be missing either the percent, the part, or the whole. So using the percent proportion, you're going to see statements, mathematical questions. A percent is part of a whole. That's a statement that you want to become familiar with. So what is a percent? A percent is a part of a whole, which I just showed you with the circle. So understanding that this keyword is identifies your part, and this keyword of identifies your whole, because we say it that is a part of a whole. So we have a percent over 100. And it's equal to R is the part of the whole. So if you can embrace this whole idea of what you've already known, that a fraction is a ratio, that something is a part of a whole, and it can be equivalent to a percent over 100, you're all set. So let's identify the percent, the part, and the whole. So remembering that a percent is part of a whole, you're going to be given three different kinds of questions. Here's one. What number is 50% of 30? 15 is 50% of what number? And 15 is what percent of 30? So each of these is asking the same mathematical thing. However, either the percent is missing from one of them, the part is missing from another, and the whole is missing from the other. So you have three different statements, and one's asking you to find the percent, one's asking you to find the part, and one's asking you to find the whole. So I like to have my students first break this down, kind of like translating a foreign language. So the first thing I want to do is walk through identifying the percents in each one. So in the first one, the percent right here is easy because it's 50%. Second one, 50%. The third one, what percent? That's what I don't know. That's going to be my X. 
x in my proportion. Now let's go through each one of these questions and identify the part. Remembering a part is, right, part of a whole. It is part of a whole. So we're looking for that keyword is to identify the part. So let's go through. Here, what number is? We don't know. That's our x. 15 is, is identifying my part, and 15 is. So these are the parts in these questions. Now we're looking for of the whole. What's the whole? So of 30, of what number? In this one, this would be my x, and of 30. So in the first statement, my what number is, I'm missing the part. In the second question, I'm missing the whole. And in the third question, I'm missing the percent. So you're going to be given these types of questions and you're going to have to identify these three components and understand what you're solving for. So we're going to go through this first one. What number is 50% of 30? So we broke this down in the previous slide. So now we're going to write the proportion and solve to find out what number is 50% of 30. So again, we're going to use this percent proportion. So we know that our percent is 50, so we are going to drop the percent symbol and write it as a ratio. 50 out of 100 is equivalent to 50%. And then we're going to say that this is equal to a part of a whole. And we know that our part is our unknown. That's our x, and our whole is 30. So we put all of our parts here, part of a whole and our percent, and it forms a proportion. So now we're going to use cross products property to solve 100 times x is equal to 50 times 30. We're going to multiply 50 times 30 to get 1500. And now we're going to divide both sides by 100 to isolate x. And we solve and we get that x is equal to 15. So now I know that 15 is 50% of 30, which makes sense, right? 50% of something is half and 15 is half of 30. Your turn. I would like you to take a turn at writing the percent proportion and solving it. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Good luck. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So here's our percent proportion. I first filled in my percent, I identified 65%, which is 65 out of 100. What number is, that's my part, is the part. So there's my x, and of 30, that's my whole. 30 goes in the denominator. Part over whole, percent. So now you use the cross products property, and you get 100 times x is equal to 65 times 30. Multiply 65 times 30. 100x equals 1,950. Divide both sides by 100 to isolate x. And divide by 100, x is equal to 19.5. So I know that my solution is 19.5. So 19.5 is 65% of 30. which is reasonable, right? Half of 30 was 15. So we know that a little bit more than that is going to be more, 19.5. Your turn. Try another one. Identify your three elements, write your percent proportion, and use cross products to solve. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I identified that what I didn't know was the percent. My part, 18 is, and my whole of 40. So 18 over 40, this ratio I want to know is equivalent to what percent? So cross products property, I'm going to do 40 times x is equal to 100 times 18. Multiply 100 times 18 to get 40x equals 1800. Divide both sides by 40 to solve for x, and x is equal to 45. One more step here, it's 45%. So just keep in mind, whatever you're trying to find, if it's the percent, you need to add the percent symbol, because 45 and 45% are two different values. So now I know that 18 
is 45% of 40. And if we want to check reasonableness, is this reasonable? Let's say that that's just under 50%, which we know is half. Half of 40 is 20. So this makes sense. This is just shy of 20. So it makes sense that it would be 45%. It's reasonable. Try another one. Please pause. Create your percent proportion. Cross products property to solve. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Good luck. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So 13 is, that's my part, 25% written as a ratio, 25 out of 100, and of what number? So I'm missing the whole. So 13 out of what whole value is equivalent to 25%? Cross products property, 25 times x is equal to 100 times 13. Multiply the 100 times 13, and I get 1,300. To isolate x, I'm going to divide both sides by 25. x is equal to 52. So 13 is 25% of what number? Which is 52. All right, let's see how you did. Can you create the percent proportion using these four pieces, these four parts, yourself without looking back? Please pause and see if you can do it. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So you should have your percent over 100 is equal to your part over your whole. That's it. That's our percent proportion. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today and found it helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's lesson. Have a great day.